this room is a mess. Hello, and welcome to the September edition of Photo Recap, where I look back on the photos that I took and post it on my Instagram and wherever in September. Uh, This month, we're talking about my five favorite photos that I took in September of 2023. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, up first we have a photo of some balloons. This photo was taken on Kodak Color Plus 200 with a Pentax K1000 and a 50mm lens. Okay, so here we have a photo of some wet balloons that I came across when I was in Manhattan. It was one of those scenes that you come across where I saw it and this was early in the morning and the sun was still rising. And it seemed so sad, it seemed so out of place, and luckily, I had my camera in my bag. So I was able to pull it out and snap a photo, and I didn't really think much of it, but immediately when I got the scans back, I saw this photo and it became one of my favorite photos that I've taken in recent memory. I honestly think it's the color, for sure, that adds a great deal of pop to this image. But I also think it's the subject matter. There's some something so intriguing about seeing some wet balloons on the side of a sidewalk on a Saturday morning in Manhattan. And kind of like I mentioned in my video from a few months ago, when I was in London, there was a wine glass on a stoop. And there's a whole story behind these balloons and how they got there. And I think that the fact that they're wet is also one of the most interesting parts of this photo because it just adds another layer. There's also just the natural geometric elements of this photo, which I really like. We have these circles and ovals that are surrounded by squares and rectangles and triangles. The triangle of the road in the top right corner definitely helps to balance the image. And yeah, I know it's not the most exciting photo, but for some reason it speaks to me on a pretty deep and emotional level. And... I don't usually do these rankings and or these videos in, in order of favorite, but I gotta say, this one's probably my favorite of the month. I also mentioned in that video from when I was in London about if you're gonna shoot color, you should make it count. And I think that this is an example of that, where the color is really an important element of the photo. All right, up next we have a photo of some wooden pillars that are sticking out of some water. So here's a photo that I took on Fuji Acros 102. I was testing out this film for a future video, which you'll probably see. And I was on a little bit of a photo walk in downtown Brooklyn or over by Brooklyn Bridge Park. And part of what this film is known for is its ability to handle reciprocity. So I was making a point to shoot this film at slower shutter speeds. I don't know exactly what the shutter speed was when I took this photo, but I do know that the sun was going down and at this point it was getting pretty dark outside so i believe that i had my camera's shutter at roughly a half a second and for me personally there's something so calming about this photo but also a bit eerie kind of like children of the corny about this i like that the water is smooth but it isn't so smooth that it looks totally unnatural Uh, like you can still make out the fact that it's very clearly water and compositionally i really like that I had these sort of two main areas of subject matter. We have this larger clump of wooden pillars that is spread out in the shape of a triangle in the foreground. And then in the back, we have this other little clump in the top left of the image. And just like with the wet balloon photo, I think that this kind of breaking up of the of the clumps kind of kind of balances the image in some way. This photo also reminds me of a lot of fan hose images of water and boats out on the water and tree branches and stuff like that and I, I think that I think in his images there was quite a contrast between the black against the white and I mean it's why you shoot black and white film I mean the it's for that contrast so I'm glad I was able to capture that sort of contrast in some aspect in this photo I also think that this photo has a nice gradient from dark to light when you go from the bottom of the image to the top of the image. Um, It's just something that uh, I'm looking at it now and it just caught my eye. 
Up next, we have some double exposures of my friend Taylor. These photos were taken on Kentmare Pan 100 with a Ricoh XR2 and a 50mm lens. Okay, so here we have two separate photos of double exposures of my friend Taylor during a photo shoot that we did that I'm going to talk more about that photo shoot more in this video, but I wanted to highlight these two because it's nice to highlight when experience do go as you planned them to go. I don't typically take a whole lot of double exposures and it's something that I'm trying to incorporate into my work a little bit more and I'm trying to be creative with how I use them instead of just generally stacking one image on top of another like how could I use multiple exposures to craft something within the same frame but when doing something like this you have a lot of different elements that can affect the overall outcome of the image so in the first image for example the camera was set on a tripod and we marked Taylor's feet where she was going to stand on the left side of frame and then once that photo was taken I had to be very careful not to pan or tilt the camera or move it in any way and I had to carefully press the multiple exposure button and advance the advance lever and she had to step to her spot on the right and I wanted to make sure that she wasn't going to overlap with herself from the first image and looking here we could see that she just barely made it without overlapping coming within inches of the dress and her hand and honestly if you didn't know any better you might even think that this was a photo of a set of twins and I, I think that even Taylor said that it was giving some heavy parent trap energy and I agree and that was sort of the point with this whole one twin giving a disappointed look at the cool twin I maybe kind of think I might want to try something like this but in addition to having them slide to the left or right, having them completely do an entire wardrobe change on top of it to make it look more like a different person in the same image. I'll probably try that. Maybe you'll see something next month to that effect. And then we have the other image, and this one was a little bit trickier because you're dealing with the same thing, but for this photo, I didn't have the luxury of it being on a tripod because I actually had to physically flip the camera and essentially tailor just sat there looking up in the same direction and I had to sort of guess how far into the frame I had her and then match it when I flipped the image and luckily I think it came out looking amazing. I think it gives a very trippy energy and a, a very trippy looking image and again if I was just slightly off on framing her for the second image um, I would have had their heads overlapping but luckily that didn't happen and what you get is this really interesting camera effect. Up next, I have four more images of Taylor from this photo shoot, so let's look at those. Okay, so these four photos were from that same photo shoot with Taylor, and I want to highlight them mainly because they are fairly standard portraits, but I don't mean to say standard as a way of diminishing them, because I think that they're quite beautiful. But I mainly wanted to share these because taking portraits is something that I'm relatively new to. I mean, sure, I've taken the occasional photo of a friend at a party or something, but I've really been making a point over the last few months to invite people into my studio here in my office um, or to go on walks with them and take deliberate portraits of them. And these four images were meant to just be standard portraits. And there's an element of, for me, taking portraits and wanting to do something that stands out or do something like have the model stand in a particularly unique or interesting way or do something wacky like I don't know double exposures or you know something that just isn't pointing the camera at their face and having them look into the lens but here I decided to do it and I decided to take a few photos and have Taylor try some different positions with her hands and really show off those rings that she's wearing and the results are some of my favorite photos from the photo shoot and I think that there's something very powerful about just the human face looking right at you. There are other images from this photo shoot where maybe Taylor is looking off camera to the left or to the right and I'm trying different things like having foreground elements and they're all really nice photos and honestly this entire photo shoot could have been the video because I got so many great images out of it and you're gonna see them all at the at the end of the video. But I wanna highlight these four because I don't wanna look down on something for being for lack of a better term, basic. 
several things make these photos work and it isn't just having a particularly attractive model looking you in the eyes. It could be anyone really. There's something psychologically that happens in our brains when we look at a photo of a human face and human eyes looking back at us. It's almost as though we can't feel, feel or distinguish the barrier between image and reality. I also think that for as basic as these photos may be, there's some challenge to taking a striking image or a memorable lasting image of just a classic bust pose or photographing someone's face in a unique way. And I'm not saying that these photos are unique, but it was something that I felt very strongly, even when looking back at these photos, as they were striking and memorable and they were some of my favorite of the bunch. And I thought about how I would have shot them differently or how I might shoot them again with another person or what I might tell the person to do or what I might tell them to think of in order to get the emotion in the eyes that I think I'm looking for. And I actually think that's something else to highlight about these photos. Each of these photos kind of give off a different emotion and I didn't necessarily tell Taylor to do that even though part of me wishes that I did so that I could take some of the credit, but she just sort of understood the assignment and gave me some different looks with different emotions and it's all right there in the eyes. Uh, the eyes are a very powerful thing. Up next, we have a photo of a stray Brooklyn cat. Okay, last but not least, we have this photo of a cat that I stumbled across while I was on a walk to a coffee shop not too far from my apartment. And this cat was just chilling on this little bed here and he seemed pretty unbothered by my presence. Actually, after I took this photo and I, I, I called him over and I started petting him a little bit, I actually started walking home and he started following me home and I thought I was about to inadvertently adopt a cat but um, eventually he walked back over to his bed to lay down but I decided to add this photo here just because I'm always baffled when I'm able to get a good photo of an animal just because of how unruly they could be and not only that I think that compositionally it's fairly interesting we've got a lot of different lines zigzagging a lot of different triangles there's even a sort of this implied triangle with the wood beams and the cat that, uh, here, I'll, I'll show you a drawing. And also, not only that, but I'm amazed that I nailed focus because I shot this with a Pentax K1000 and I must have been shooting around a four or something, and that camera is not particularly my favorite camera to focus on, but uh, somehow I was able to get sharp focus right on the cat and his very yellow eyes. And I also shot this photo on Color Plus, which is probably my favorite color film stock to shoot with at the moment the colors are just so vibrant i mean look at the look at the greens there's a lot of really great photos that i took this month or photos that i'm really proud of and i just kind of wanted to throw this one in there because it makes me happy to look at um i hope that the cat is doing well out there in these mean streets and i like to think he's doing okay i like to think that he's dining on some street mice out there somewhere and um, I think he's doing well. Anyway, those are some of my favorite photos that I took in September of 2023. Uh, it was a, a very busy month for me taking a lot of photos. I got a new job uh, so that kind of takes some time away from me taking photos but I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best and um, hopefully October will yield a lot of similar results. I'm, I got a couple of photo shoots lined up with some people and um, we'll, we'll look at that a month from now. But anyway, in the meantime, um, feel free to stick around and look at the rest of the photos that I took in September. Um, also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when new videos are released. Also, this channel is now accepting memberships, so go find that join button and just for a couple bucks a month, uh, you can get some interesting perks. Thank you to those of you who have already subscribed and have been commenting on all of my videos. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, it's very nice to see a lot of different people getting involved and a lot of different voices being brought into the mix. So I'm excited to see this channel keep growing and I intend to keep making these videos as long as I physically can. 
So without further ado, I'm going to end this video the way I end all of these photo recap videos with some more photos from September of 2023. And I'll see you all next time. Thank you.